Following decades of relentless investigation and speculation, scientists finally revealed concrete evidence that accurately identifies the burial site of Jesus. Upon entering the tomb, their astonishment was palpable at the discovery of invaluable artifacts, offering answers to long-standing queries that have intrigued scholars, faithful followers, and skeptics alike. What led these experts to such a definitive assertion, and how was it substantiated? Embark on this captivating journey with us as we delve into the scientists' discovery of Jesus' tomb, a mystery that had remained sealed for thousands of years. Chapter 1. Unveiling Hidden Secrets of the Holy Sepulchre Led by Chief Scientific Supervisor Antonio Moro, a team of researchers embarked on a groundbreaking endeavor, uncovering a revelation that resonated worldwide. Extracting mortar samples from various points within the Edicule, a sacred structure surrounding Jesus' tomb, they initiated a meticulous process of investigation. The age-old mortar, a silent witness to architectural history, underwent scrutiny as scientists delved into the complexities of radiocarbon dating. Their aim, to unveil the hidden secrets concealed within the mortar's composition. The recent disclosure of test results shed new light on the Edicule's timeline, unveiling a surprising revelation. The foundational lower slab, crucial to the sacred monument, was likely mortared in place during the mid-fourth century. This revelation added historical depth to the monument, aligning its origins with the era of Emperor Constantine, a pivotal historical figure. The confirmation of Emperor Constantine's involvement in the Edicule's construction carries profound implications, enriching the narrative for scholars and historians dedicated to unraveling its enigmatic history. The mid-fourth century timeframe provides a glimpse into a bygone era, connecting the Edicule's architectural evolution with the annals of the Roman Empire. As the results emerged as a welcome surprise to those studying the sacred monument, the dating of the Edicule's lower slab serves as a testament to the enduring pursuit of historical truth. Once silent witnesses, the mortar samples now echo with revelations, enriching our understanding of Emperor Constantine's sacred journey and the individuals who shaped the sanctity of Jesus' tomb. In their quest to date the sacred mortar samples, scientists utilized a sophisticated technique called optically stimulated luminescence, OSL. This method acted as a time-traveling tool, enabling researchers to discern when quartz sediment integral to the mortar was last exposed to light. The significance of this technique lies in its precision, unveiling temporal refinements with remarkable accuracy. The journey of analyzing the mortar samples was thorough, involving examination at two separate laboratories, each contributing independently to the quest for clarity regarding time. Using OSL, researchers aimed to uncover the history embedded within the quartz sediment. This sediment's exposure to light over time provided crucial clues, shedding light on the periods when the mortar underwent significant changes. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem has endured through the ages, standing steadfast against the ravages of time, bearing witness to a tumultuous saga marked by violence, fires, and earthquakes. Within its walls, the echoes of centuries resonate, each era etched with its trials and tribulations. In the year 1009, the Church faced unprecedented devastation, a disastrous event that, almost a thousand years later, still poses challenges to modern scientists seeking the sacred ground of Jesus' tomb. As contemporary minds pondered, questions echoed through the corridors of time, wondering if the reconstructed edifice faithfully mirrored the sacred ground identified nearly 17 centuries ago by a delegation dispatched from Rome. The church stands as proof of Jerusalem's indomitable spirit, inviting contemplation into the layered narratives that define faith's journey and the quest for historical truth. Amidst the scrutiny of mortar samples extracted from the remains of the cave's southern wall, a historical timeline began to take shape. The dating of these samples to the years 335 and 1570 served as a bridge, connecting Roman-era construction activities with a documented 16th-century restoration. These mortar echoes, embedded within the Edicule's fabric, testified to the enduring history imprinted on the sacred space. The silent witness of the southern wall reveals evidence of Roman-era construction, reinforcing the narrative of the Edicule's evolution over time. Informed by precise dating methods, scientific scrutiny allowed for the deciphering of chronological imprints left by successive builders and restorers. A shocking revelation unfolded as scientists focused on the tomb entrance. The mortar extracted from this crucial location bore the temporal signature of the 11th century, corresponding with a significant chapter in the Edicule's history the careful reconstruction following its destruction in 1009. The reconstruction efforts of the 11th century, reflected in the dated mortar, revealed the resilience of those dedicated to preserving the sacred space. 
The scientific examination of these fragments not only served as a chronological compass but also paid tribute to the craftsmanship and determination of those who contributed to the continuous rebirth of the Edicule over the centuries. The destruction of this cornerstone of Christian reverence dealt a severe blow to the aspirations of those hoping to unravel the mysteries hidden within its sacred confines. However, from the ashes emerged a symbol of resilience as the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was painstakingly reconstructed. Despite this restoration, doubts lingered among contemporary scholars, casting shadows of uncertainty upon the authenticity of the site associated with the burial place of Christ. Despite these doubts, the tomb still receives daily visits from millions of pilgrims and is maintained by priests from various Christian denominations. They adhere to strict regulations that have been in place since the Ottoman era. Apart from the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there are six additional tombs in Jerusalem that some folks think might be where Jesus of Nazareth was first laid to rest. Chapter 2 Jesus's Tomb Unveiled In the heart of Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre, researchers recently embarked on a gripping journey as they unlocked the ancient door to Jesus's tomb. What awaited them inside sent shivers down their spines, a discovery that bridged the gap between centuries. Beneath the stone slab, believed to have cradled the body of Jesus, they unearthed ancient mortar remnants from the era of Roman Emperor Constantine. This revelation added weight to the historical narratives, pinpointing the exact resting place of Jesus, cherished by Christians worldwide. Digging into the depths of history, we encounter Constantine, a significant figure in the narrative as the first Roman ruler to embrace Christianity. His tale intertwines with the sacred site, believed to enshrine Jesus's rocky sepulcher, regarded as the Son of God in the Christian faith. Facilitated by Constantine's mother, Helena, a profound chapter unfolded between 325 and 326 AD. Legend speaks of a tomb concealed beneath a Roman temple dedicated to the goddess Venus. Inspired by a divine calling, Constantine dispatched emissaries on a quest for this revered relic in 325 AD. Their pilgrimage led them to Jerusalem, where they embarked on a quest to locate the resting place of Jesus. Tradition holds that they were guided to a Roman temple that had stood for centuries. Upon reaching this historic enclave, Constantine's envoys confronted a crucial juncture. The Roman temple, steeped in antiquity, became the focal point of their expedition. In pursuit of the sacred sepulcher, the structure, rich with historical layers, was meticulously dismantled to unveil the secrets veiled beneath its ancient foundations. As layers of time peeled away, a carefully carved marble tomb emerged, marking a profound moment in history. The natural cavern underwent sanctification as its upper section was hewn away, revealing the sacred sanctum within. The construction of the Edicule, a protective enclosure embracing the hallowed space, was inspired by this revelatory unveiling. The saga of Constantine's quest and the uncovering of the tomb beneath the Roman temple symbolizes the complex interplay of history, faith, and the pursuit of divine relics. These narratives hold profound significance for Christians, intertwining the spiritual and temporal realms in a tale of profound meaning. Within the hallowed confines of the tomb, believed to cradle the earthly remains of Jesus Christ, a prominent feature emerges, a solemn shelf, often referred to as a burial bed. Legend has it that this sacred spot cradled the lifeless body of Jesus after the harrowing ordeal of the crucifixion, evoking deep introspection and symbolizing the enduring impact of a crucial event in Christian theology. Examining the architectural complexities of the tomb, Parallels emerge with the sepulchers of affluent Jews in first-century Jerusalem. Crafted from enduring limestone caves, these tombs often featured shelves and alcoves akin to those found within. It underscores a shared ethos among people of that era, reflecting a communal reverence for honoring the departed. Beyond mere construction, the funerary bed embodies a symbolic nexus, entwined with the spiritual narrative of Christianity, serving as a perpetual resting place and a silent witness to the profound events imbued with spiritual significance. The connection between the carvings on limestone and the profound Christian faith runs deep. As we delve into history, peeling back its layers, the marble covering on the gravebed reveals itself, believed to have been delicately laid as early as 1555. This tangible relic speaks volumes about the passage of time within the sacred chamber, suggesting that the tomb's existence predates even the mid-1300s. Stories passed down through generations of pilgrims offer invaluable insights into this complex history, illuminating the sanctity it embodies. Each chisel mark etched into the granite and the contours of the grave bed encapsulate the memories of bygone eras. By intertwining the reverence of pilgrims and believers with these intricate details, a bridge forms between the past and the present, transcending the constraints of time. More than just a structure, 
the tomb embodies a reservoir, holding the weight of centuries of worship and contemplation. It beckons all who draw near to engage with a narrative that endures through the ages, inviting them to connect with a story that stands as an eternal testament to faith and devotion. Chapter 3. The Holy Sepulchre Church Restoration In 2017, a team of experts embarked on a major restoration project within Jerusalem's Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Christians hold the site sacred, believing it to be where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected. Throughout history, this renowned church has undergone numerous renovations and alterations, piquing the interest of historians, archaeologists, and believers alike. The primary objective of the restoration effort was to reinforce the Edicule, a small shrine within the church housing the tomb of Jesus. Erected in the early 1800s, the Edicule had undergone several repairs and updates, but signs of wear and instability had begun to show over time, such as cracks in the marble walls and an unstable base. With great care, the restoration team carefully removed the marble covering from the tomb's inner chamber, revealing a previously sealed compartment hidden within. This unexpected discovery astonished archaeologists, unveiling a forgotten chamber untouched for centuries. Though the sealed chamber yielded no human remains or significant artifacts, its presence shed light on the church's evolving history and added a new layer of intrigue. Historians and archaeologists deemed the find significant, recognizing it as an opportunity to delve deeper into the mysteries surrounding the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Scholars continue to grapple with questions about the chamber's purpose and significance, seeking to unravel its secrets and gain a deeper understanding of this revered site. Meanwhile, beyond Jerusalem, attention has turned to the Talpiot tomb, located in the town of Talpiot, just south of the city. Discovered in 1980, this tomb complex contained ten ossuaries, two of which have sparked intense debate. Inscriptions on these ossuaries bear names like Yeshua bar Yosef, meaning Jesus son of Joseph, and Maria, or Mary, leading some to speculate that they may belong to Jesus, Mary, and other family members. However, experts remain divided on the authenticity and significance of these inscriptions, with skeptics pointing out the commonality of names like Yeshua and Miriam during that era. Despite the controversy, the discoveries within the Talpiot tomb continue to fuel curiosity and exploration into the mysteries of Jesus' burial place. Ancient archaeologists are still investigating the Talpiot tomb. While there's no solid evidence linking it to Jesus' burial, it remains a significant part of the ongoing exploration into the life and death of Jesus, adding layers to our understanding of history through archaeological research. Chapter 4. Mysterious Tombs of Jerusalem In Jerusalem, there's a fascinating mystery surrounding the Talpiot family tomb, located about five kilometers south of the ancient city. Discovered in 1980, it gained widespread attention following the airing of the 2007 Discovery Channel documentary, The Lost Tomb of Jesus, created by James Cameron and directed by Simka Jakubovicai. Inside this tomb were ten ossuaries, or bone boxes, bearing names like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. The filmmakers zoomed in on one ossuary inscribed with Mariamine, sparking speculation about a potential marriage to Jesus. Additionally, two other ossuaries were labeled Judah son of Jesus and Jesus son of Joseph, fueling rumors about a son named Judah. Supporters of the Talpiot family tomb pointed to DNA tests supposedly disproving a maternal link between Jesus and Mariamine. However, critics raised the possibility of alternative family relationships, such as a father-daughter or grandfather-granddaughter connection. Some researchers, like James Tabor, suggested a familial tie between Jesus and the famous James, his brother, based on trace elements found in the soil of East Jerusalem. In the Kidron Valley lies the Tomb of the Shroud, a site believed by some to be a possible burial place of Jesus. However, its historical accuracy is debated. The tomb's proximity to the Garden of Gethsemane adds to its intrigue. Carved from rock, its design mirrors the common burial chambers of ancient Judea. The tomb's significance stems from its association with events surrounding Jesus' death and burial. An ancient burial shroud found their fuel speculation about its connection to Jesus. Legend ties the grave to Joseph of Arimathea, who, according to the New Testament, provided Jesus a burial site post-crucifixion. Yet skepticism shrouds this tradition with archaeological evidence for its link to Jesus being scant. Despite uncertainties, the tomb of the shroud remains a magnet for pilgrims due to its religious significance and enigmatic ties to Jesus' burial. It stands as a piece in the complex tapestry of beliefs and customs surrounding Jesus' final resting place. Another notable site, the Dominus Flevit Church, graces Jerusalem's Mount of Olives. While not traditionally considered Jesus' tomb, 
it boasts a breathtaking panorama of the old city. Its name, meaning the Lord wept, in Latin, commemorates Jesus' lamentation over Jerusalem from this location. Designed by Italian builder Antonio Barluzzi to resemble a teardrop, the church symbolizes Jesus' tears. Though not directly linked to Jesus' tomb like the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, it carries profound spiritual significance. Dominus Flevit Church enriches the Mount of Olives with historical resonance, architectural beauty, and religious narratives from Jesus' era. Chemical tests, funded by filmmaker Simca Jakubavasai, indicated a similarity between the James Ossuary and the Talpia tomb. Yet, the validity of these results remains questionable due to the limited sample size. Moreover, uncertainty surrounds the origin of the James Ossuary, which differs from those found in the Talpia tomb. Scholars interviewed for the documentary expressed dissatisfaction with how their views were presented, prompting skepticism regarding the filmmaker's conclusions. One significant puzzle piece remains unsolved. Why would Jesus' family, believed to be from Galilee, have a family tomb in Jerusalem? Archaeologist Jody Magnus suggests that only wealthy families in Jesus' time opted for rock-cut tombs and Asura practices, casting doubt on the Talpiat tombs association with Jesus' family. Contrastingly, the garden tomb, gained fame in 1883 as another possible burial site for Jesus, named Gordon's Tomb by Charles Gordon. Its serene garden ambience attracts tourists, particularly conservative Christians. However, its identification as Jesus' tomb is marred by questionable claims, such as Gordon's likening of Jerusalem to a skeleton with Skull Hill as its head. Moreover, fraudulent assertions, like Ron Wyatt's claim of discovering the Ark of the Covenant nearby, further undermine its credibility. Archaeologist Gabriel Barkey's findings trace the Garden Tomb's history back to the Iron Age, around the 7th or 8th century BC, aligning with tombs from the First Temple era. This antiquity contradicts the notion of it being a new tomb during Jesus' time, as suggested in John 19. Consequently, researchers have dismissed it as a plausible burial site for Jesus. The fifth and sixth tombs hold significance for some who believe they are linked to Jesus. They are known as the Tomb of the Virgin Mary and the Tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The Tomb of the Virgin Mary, located in the Kidron Valley, is thought to be the resting place of Jesus' mother. Though lacking concrete evidence, pilgrims and tourists are drawn to it for its perceived importance in Christian history. Its allure lies in the devotion to Mary and the rich tales woven into Christian tradition. On the other hand, the location of Joseph of Arimathea's tomb is subject to debate. Renowned for providing his own tomb for Jesus' burial, conflicting accounts place his tomb in the Kidron Valley or elsewhere. This ambiguity adds to the mystique surrounding the final resting place of a figure pivotal in Jesus' burial. Both tombs are steeped in religious history and inspire profound devotion. They offer insights into the Christian faith through stories passed down through generations. Those fascinated by the historical and spiritual significance of Jesus' burial continue their quest to uncover the exact location of his tomb. It's time for today's subscriber pick. In the midst of an obscure valley, shrouded by the earth and centuries of history, researchers stumbled upon the ancient burial site of Jesus of Nazareth. Under the guidance of Dr. Emily Collins, the expedition ventured deep underground, fueled by rumors of a sacred artifact veiled from humanity for ages. Crossing into the tomb's entrance, they were greeted by an astonishing sight, an ornate ancient sarcophagus, its secrets veiled in shadows. With meticulous care, they unearthed artifacts from a distant past, broken pottery, fragments of ancient texts, and evidence of rituals long forgotten. Amidst the layers of history, they found startling DNA proof connecting the tomb's resident to Jesus' lineage. The revelation that the final resting place of Jesus had been discovered, preserved for thousands of years, drew throngs of pilgrims eager to be part of this historic moment. In the midst of this frenzy, Dr. Collins stood quietly, overwhelmed by the magnitude of their find, contemplating the remarkable journey that had led to the unveiling of a truth hidden for so long. Share your views on the monumental find of Jesus' tomb. Chapter 5. A Journey Through Truth and Doubt The story begins with the discovery of the empty tomb, as recounted in the Gospels, with Mary Magdalene being the first to find it. The burial clothes of Jesus are there, but his body is missing. While some have cast doubts on the truth of the empty tomb, most people do not believe that the entire story was fabricated. The Bible documents a conversation between the Jewish leaders and the disciples regarding the discovery of the empty grave. They discussed the allegation that the disciples stole the body. The Jewish Sanhedrin posited this theory, but it seems improbable since there were guards stationed at the tomb. These guards were likely Jewish temple guards, 
as it's unlikely that Pilate would involve Roman guards in what he perceived as an internal religious matter among Jews. It's hard to fathom that the disciples could bribe either Jewish or Roman guards, especially considering the severe consequences Roman guards faced for neglecting their duties. Regarding the theory that Jesus didn't die but rather survived the crucifixion, escaped from his tomb, and appeared to his followers as the resurrected Son of God, there are significant challenges. Firstly, it would be implausible for Jesus, severely injured from scourging and crucifixion, to convincingly portray himself as triumphant over death while enduring such physical trauma. Crucifixion was typically fatal, with death occurring unless immediate aid was provided. Crucified individuals endured excruciating pain, extreme fatigue, blood loss, and exposure. Roman guards overseeing crucifixions were instructed to ensure the prisoner's death and were not permitted to intervene to save them. Additionally, in John 19, a Roman soldier pierces Jesus' side with a spear, confirming his death. The account of blood and water flowing from his side aligns with medical expectations for someone dying from crucifixion, indicating that the author either witnessed the event or received first-hand information. The story of the empty tomb is crucial, as it underpins the Christian narrative of resurrection. The theories that Jesus' body was stolen or that he survived face considerable challenges. Had Jesus remained in the tomb, it would have discredited the disciples' claim of his resurrection allowing Jewish leaders to debunk the emerging Christian movement by demonstrating the tomb was occupied. Notably, the discovery of the empty tomb is attributed to women, a significant detail in a society where women's testimony was often disregarded. Despite this cultural bias, early Christians boldly asserted the role of women in the discovery, a detail that could have been seen as awkward and unconvincing. Yet, its inclusion suggests the disciples were truthful about the events even if it meant acknowledging something potentially embarrassing about their narrative. If the disciples verified that Jesus' tomb was indeed discovered empty, it raises curiosity about the ongoing fascination with its whereabouts, which adds an extra layer of mystery to the narratives found in the Gospels. Chapter 6. Unraveling the Gospel Narratives The Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are essential texts in understanding the resurrection story within the New Testament. However, some critics argue that relying solely on these sources creates a circular argument, as they stem from the Christian faith itself. Thus, assessing the reliability of these accounts becomes crucial when evaluating the truthfulness and accuracy of the resurrection narrative. To comprehend the origins of the New Testament and its significance, it's vital to explore its formation process. Before being written down around 200 AD, the New Testament comprised apocalyptic visions, letters to various churches, and the Synoptic Gospels, which formalized oral traditions. Paul's writings and the Synoptic Gospels are considered authentic historical records, leading to their inclusion in the New Testament canon. Despite their historical value, doubts persist regarding the preservation of factual details in the Gospels and the authenticity of Paul's letters. Bart Ehrman, a prominent New Testament and textual expert leaning toward agnosticism, highlights the absence of original autographs and the potential for alterations in later copies. Ehrman's scrutiny extends to stories like that of Jesus and the adulterous woman in John chapter 7 to 8, which scholars believe to be an addition to the original text. While acknowledging textual transmission challenges and possible alterations, proponents of the New Testament's historical accuracy suggest that core teachings and events could have been transmitted orally before being recorded. Despite debates among scholars, theologians, and historians regarding historical reliability, the widespread dissemination of Christian teachings, and the decentralized nature of early Christian communities make significant alterations improbable without detection. The careful preservation of sacred texts, as evidenced by the Dead Sea Scrolls and early Church Father writings, highlights the commitment to maintaining textual integrity. Textual criticism, alongside the examination of ancient manuscripts and comparisons with early writings, aids in understanding the transmission and preservation of religious texts, like the New Testament in assessing the earliest versions of the Gospels. While acknowledging imperfections, one can confidently assert their faithful conveyance of the original manuscript's content and message. This complex subject necessitates a rigorous study of historical data and a thoughtful interpretation of available sources. Illuminating the enduring legacy of religious texts across millennia, Professor Ehrman effectively highlights the unreliability of the Gospel accounts by pinpointing discrepancies within them. Specifically, the Gospels diverge in their narratives of the discovery of Jesus' empty tomb. Matthew recounts that Mary Magdalene and another Mary encountered an angel at the tomb who informed them of Jesus' resurrection and instructed them to relay the news to his disciples before meeting him in Galilee. In contrast, Mark describes Mary Magdalene, Salome, 
and another woman discovering a young man inside the tomb who directs them to inform Jesus' followers of his resurrection appearance in Galilee. Luke's version differs further, depicting the women finding the tomb empty and encountering two men in bright clothing, although they are not instructed to inform the disciples or journey to Galilee. John presents yet another perspective, with Mary Magdalene initially believing Jesus' body had been removed, only to encounter angels and Jesus himself outside the tomb. The varying accounts make it challenging to reconcile the texts, especially considering John's notably distinct narrative. While differences exist among Matthew, Mark, and Luke due to their diverse authors and contexts, they do not necessarily contradict each other but emphasize different aspects deemed significant by their respective writers. For instance, Luke emphasizes the collective group of women visiting the tomb, whereas Matthew and Mark focus on specific individuals they consider crucial. The absence of explicit instructions in certain accounts, such as Luke's omission of the directive to inform the disciples or travel to Galilee, does not negate the possibility of these events occurring, as the author may have assumed their familiarity with the audience. The portrayal of angels in the narratives aligns in some aspects, with Matthew and Mark emphasizing the dialogue with an angelic figure. John's departure from the synoptic accounts reflects its unique perspective, emphasizing the deeper significance of Jesus' identity rather than merely recounting events. This viewpoint, shared by many scholars, distinguishes John from the synoptic gospels, positioning it as a theological exploration rather than a purely historical record. In summary, the discrepancies among the gospel accounts do not undermine the core facts and mainly reflect differences in emphasis rather than irreconcilable contradictions. Similar variations occurred in the testimonies of Titanic survivors. Despite minor discrepancies, the overarching events of the ship's sinking were universally understood. Moreover, exact alignment among the gospel narratives might imply single authorship, potentially diminishing their historical reliability. Concerns about the time gap between the gospels and Jesus' death, voiced by some skeptics outside the realm of historical scholarship, are generally disregarded by serious historians. It is essential to consider the strength of oral tradition among ancient Jews in the first century. In a predominantly illiterate society, storytelling served as a primary means of transmitting historical accounts, particularly regarding religious texts held in high regard. Both religious Jews and early Christians placed great importance on accurately preserving the integrity of their sacred texts through oral recollection. Furthermore, the earliest written records about Jesus emerged approximately 25 years after his death. Despite this relatively short time frame, Jesus remains one of the most extensively documented historical figures of old. A comparison with figures like Alexander the Great, whose earliest sources emerged over 300 years after his death, underscores the historical reliability of Jesus' accounts. Even Tiberius Caesar, who ruled Rome during Jesus' lifetime, lacks contemporary sources, with the best accounts appearing 80 years after his demise. Questioning the historical accuracy of the scriptures extends to doubting all of ancient history, given that Jesus' life, death, and teachings serve as invaluable sources for understanding antiquity. As the Gospels and Paul's letters are increasingly recognized as reliable historical records, the question of whether there is evidence for the resurrection as an actual event gains significance. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.